I really thought mom had a lot of money saved up. I mentioned it before, right? It's time to kick her out. Why keep a jobless person here? I've been living here for three months, and my son and his wife used up all my savings. They treated me badly. I had enough, so I left quietly. Then, my son called me. Mom, what's happening? Tony sounded worried on the phone. Around that time, something I did became big news across the United States. I'm Sarah, and I'm 70 years old. I lived in France for a while, but I got sick, so I came back to the States. My old apartment was gone, so I asked my son and his wife if I could stay with them for a bit. Tony, my only son, is 44 and works in an office. He and his wife, Alice, don't have kids, and they live quietly. We lost touch while I was away, but I decided to reconnect, and Tony seemed happy to hear from me. I explained my situation and asked if I could stay for a while. Tony agreed, though he seemed unsure. It felt awkward to rely on them, but the happiness of being with family again outweighed my doubts. With a mix of nerves and happiness, I took a taxi from the airport to their house. When I got there, Tony and Alice greeted me at the door. Tony seemed glad to see me, but Alice looked upset. I planned to stay here for a few months. My stuff will arrive later, I said leaving my carry-on bag and heading to the living room. We talked about our lives, jobs, and my time in France. When Tony asked why I moved there, I just said, I wanted to enjoy the French countryside as I get older. Tony laughed, but Alice stayed unhappy. We also talked about my health issues. I've been dizzy a lot and might have Meniere's disease. Sometimes, I can't stand and feel sick when it happens. I don't feel safe living alone, so I want to stay with them until I feel better. After our chat, I went to get my stuff for my carry-on. As I organized it in the hallway, I heard Tony and Alice talking. Are you serious about letting Sarah stay? I don't want to live with an old woman. She's my mom, Alice said. You're not always home because you work part-time, Tony replied. But what about when we're off work? How long is she staying? I want her gone. Alice insisted. Mom will leave eventually. Let's talk about money tomorrow. Just keep it down, she might hear you, Tony warned. She can't hear us, she's old. Old age brings sharp ears for insults. Alice said. There I was hearing their conversation in the hallway. I felt bad for suddenly staying with Tony and his wife. It must be hard for them, but I'm happy to spend time with them after so long. When Tony was young, I raised him alone after my husband died. We didn't have much, and Tony faced difficulties with his health. This doesn't make up for that, but I came here to apologize and show gratitude. It's a shame I'm not welcome, but they have their own lives. I went to the guest room they gave me, trying to calm my anxious heart. The next morning, Tony went to work, leaving just Alice and me at home. While I was doing some crafting in the living room, Alice came up to me. Hey Sarah, can you clean up this mess? I looked around and saw fabric scraps and threads scattered about. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll clean it up. Do you want to see what I'm making? I showed her the small pouch I was sewing, with a little green turtle design. It's a turtle pouch. I love turtles, so I make crafts with turtle themes. It even has a zipper on its shell, I explained. That's nice, Sarah, but you can't stay here all day. Find somewhere else to go when I'm not working. You're in the way. Alice said, cutting me off, clearly uninterested. But I get dizzy if I go outside too much. I protested. I'll drive you to the nearby community center to stay during the day. I have things to do at home. Alice said firmly, without room for discussion. She added, and while you're here, help with the chores. You're not just here to relax. Since we're letting you stay, do some cleaning and laundry instead of crafting. Stunned, I finally replied, okay and slowly got up from the armchair. Despite feeling dizzy and sore, I ended up doing all the housework. Alice and Tony treated me like a housekeeper, and it seemed like Alice hadn't been keeping up with chores before I arrived. That night, when Tony got home, he asked, Mom, did you bring your banking card? He spoke with a smile. I don't mind you living with us, but life costs money. Could you chip in? I looked at Tony, nodded, and stood up. I took out my banking card from my handmade pouch and handed it to him. He checked it quickly, and his face tightened. Wait, Mom, is this all you have saved? Any other accounts? I replied. That's all I have. I don't need much at my age. No chronic illnesses or anything. I smiled as the conversation continued, but Tony's expression darkened. 
This isn't enough money, not even $10,000. You said you were living well abroad, so I assumed. Tony kept pressing me, asking if I had more money. When I said no, he sighed and slumped his shoulders. Okay, I'll hold on to this cash for now. I'm doing you a favor by letting you live here, so this is the least you could do. After getting my account password, Tony took my bank and debit cards and left the room. That night, lying in bed, I could hear Tony muttering through the wall that separated our rooms. This is disappointing. I thought mom was wealthy. Our household is actually struggling financially. We shouldn't have let her stay. We gain nothing from having her here. They sounded confident, talking openly in the next room. Maybe they wanted me to hear them. In my cold bed, I fought back tears of loneliness and sadness. The next day, since Alice had a day off, she drove me to the local community center. When I opened my bag to continue my crafting, I realized I forgot the fabric I needed at home. I hesitated to ask Alice to go back and get it. Luckily, my dizziness wasn't too bad that day. So I decided to walk home to fetch it since I knew the area well. As I approached the house, I glanced through the window and saw Alice with a man I didn't recognize. They seemed very close, and I hesitated outside for a moment before deciding not to interrupt them. It dawned on me that maybe they wanted me out so I wouldn't interfere with whatever was going on between them. Back at the community center, thoughts of Alice and the man kept swirling in my mind. So I decided to call someone for advice. From then on, I avoided bringing up the situation and continued interacting with Tony and his wife as usual. However, whenever I left the house, I made sure to leave a red turtle pouch conspicuously on the living room side table. Three months had gone by since I moved in with Tony's family. By then, I had essentially become the household's maid. When I was home, I had to do endless chores, and when Alice was around, I was sent off to the community center. Most of my savings had been drained by Tony, who had a gambling addiction. He spent most of his free time on lotteries and slots, likely stemming from financial hardships he faced as a child. At first, I tried to talk to him about it, but it always ended in anger. After enduring three months of hardship, I reached my breaking point. One night before a long weekend, I decided to address something I've been pondering. Tony, Alice, I want to thank you for letting me stay with you. Tony, I know I caused difficulties for you when you were young due to our financial situation. I apologize for any trouble I caused, but I'm grateful. I presented a homemade turtle pouch from the table. It was green with a zipper on the shell. This is a token of my appreciation to both of you. I hope you'll accept it. To my surprise, neither Tony nor Alice showed any interest in my handmade gift. Mom, enough of that. Can't we access some funds from your French account or something? Tony suggested. I already told you, there's no more money. Look, I put a lot of effort into making this. Can't you accept it as a gesture of love? Remember how happy you used to be when I filled the shell with candy and a bit of pocket money. Tony's irritation grew. I'm not a child anymore. I don't find joy in receiving something like this, Sarah. How much longer do you plan to depend on us? Frankly, it's irritating. Tony and his wife exchanged a cold look, appearing desperate. I asked Tony, Do you remember Joe? He helped us out in that old apartment we lived in. What? I don't remember. Stop bringing up old stories, Tony replied sharply. A heavy silence settled between us as I held onto the turtle pouch tightly, feeling the paper inside. The next day, Tony and his wife went on vacation, leaving me behind. After our conversation the previous night, I had already planned to leave the house. I quickly packed my bags with the arranged carrier and sent them off to my home in France. I made sure to include the red turtle pouch in my carry-on bag. Leaving a brief note of gratitude and farewell on the table, I walked out of the house where I had stayed for three months. After leaving the house, I didn't immediately return home. Instead, I stayed in a hotel in the U.S. for a while. I had matters to attend to, and I figured Tony and his wife would reach out to me eventually. True to my expectations, about two weeks later Tony called. Mom, what's the deal with the turtle pouch? It's yours, right? Tony's voice sounded frantic over the phone. Oh, you noticed? I replied calmly. I wasn't surprised when I saw the news on TV about the turtle-shaped pouch. Inside it was a check for one million dollars. It was my way of expressing gratitude for all they'd done and apologizing for any trouble I caused them when Tony was young. Some might think it's shallow to make amends with money. But I had dreamed of this day for over 40 years, saving up bit by bit. 
Before meeting Tony after so long, I did some research and discovered he was in debt. He had tried to clear his gambling debts by gambling more, only to sink deeper. Despite having a steady job, he couldn't break free from the cycle. I simply wanted him to pay off his debts and find peace. However, they refused my gesture, forgetting the kindness they had once shown my family. So I decided to split the million-dollar check into smaller amounts and donate it to charities and welfare organizations across America. I placed the donations in the handmade turtle pouch and sent them anonymously. The turtle pouch became a sensation, making headlines and trending on social media. Alice, isn't that the turtle pouch? Someone commented online. Yeah, looks like it, another remarked. Yes, that's the one. I was planning to give them filled with money too, I replied. I see. Well, he could have just told us. We would have accepted it. If you didn't want my feelings, then you don't need my money either. Tony's voice was angry over the phone. It's my money. How dare you deceive me? Give it back, he demanded. I couldn't bear to listen to Tony's anger any longer, so I pulled the phone away from my ear. After a moment, I spoke, all right, calm down. You're giving me a headache. There's one more turtle. And if you really want it, it's yours. Tony eventually settled down and insisted on having the turtle. We agreed to meet later at a cafe. On the appointed day, I brought the last red turtle in an envelope to our meeting spot. Tony and his wife were already there, demanding the money before I even sat down. When I silently pulled out the red turtle, Tony snatched it immediately, unzipping its shell. But instead of finding a check, he found a small electronic device. What the heck is this? Tony was confused. He found a tiny button and pressed it. A voice started playing, and Alice, standing next to Tony, turned pale. Seated next to Tony, Alice's expression changed as she heard a voice recording. It was her own, speaking warmly with another man who wasn't Tony. What is this? Why? What's happening? Alice seemed to finally understand that it was a recording of her having an affair at home. She tried to grab the recorder from Tony's hand, but he held on tight. While they struggled, I opened the envelope. I brought out several pictures and laid them on the table, showing Alice cheating with another man at home. Faced with undeniable evidence, Alice was flustered and kept asking, Why? Why? Tony picked up the photos one by one, studying them closely. Something didn't feel right since I arrived at your house. A friend suggested I hire someone to find out and even offered to cover the costs. Why would you do this? What's wrong with you? Alice's voice trembled. Well, you're my son's wife. It's heartbreaking to think family would deceive each other. Maybe you'll understand when you're older. Fate brought me here to uncover your infidelity, Alice. Have you been lying to me this whole time? Tony's disappointment was evident in his voice. Tony, when did this start? You have secrets too. If you're saying she cheated, you need to admit your mistakes, Alice argued. I never cheated, but what about the money you owe? Tony went quiet, and Alice took her turn to speak. What about you spending all your money on gambling? I only use the money I earn, and you have a part-time job, so you should have some savings, Alice replied. As I listened to their argument, it was obvious this couple had been holding on somehow until now. Both of you are broke. Tony, you owe $40,000. Alice, you've been giving all your earnings to your other person. I had someone check your finances too, I interrupted. Both Tony and Alice were really surprised, and they started yelling at each other. I was stunned when I found out about the investigation results. This couple was really close to running out of money. Listen, if we get mom's money, we can pay off the debt, so just give it to us already, Tony insisted. I already gave away all the money. The only thing left is this red turtle statue, I clarified. He spent all my savings on gambling, remember? Tony accused Alice. What? No way. All of it? Alice's eyes widened in shock. In a fit of anger, Tony lunged at me across the table. Other people in the cafe started paying attention, and the staff rushed over. The one million dollars was supposed to be mine. It's mine. Give it back. Tony shouted. Soon, the police had to be called to calm Tony down. After they talked to him, they kindly escorted me back to my hotel because I was worried about Tony's aggressive behavior. A week later, Tony and Alice's relationship had fallen apart completely because of the affair and money problems. They got divorced. Tony, now single, got even more caught up in gambling and debt. He was caught trying to steal money from his job and was fired. To make things worse, 
his angry outburst in the cafe was recorded and shared on social media, making it hard for him to find another job. Unable to face the embarrassment, Tony cut off all contact and disappeared. After the divorce, Alice didn't have anyone to depend on, so she moved into an old public housing unit and lived alone. Just as I was about to make a donation to help rescue turtles, a post I made online joking about my own turtle went viral. Alice started experiencing harassment and stalking because of it, which eventually spread to her part-time job and got her fired. Even the man she was having an affair with got tired of her and left. Now she doesn't have any income and is relying on temporary assistance for needy families. After that, I went back to my home in France. Once I finished unpacking in my apartment, I changed into a dress smoothly. While I was going over some work documents, I heard a noise at the door. It seemed Joe, my roommate, had come back home. Hey, Madam President, welcome back. How was your trip to America? Joe greeted me with a smile as he hung up his coat and put down his bags. Hey Joe, I'm back, and look, I brought back so many souvenirs. I said excitedly. Wow, all my favorites. Thanks. I'll bring some to the storytelling event at the community center tomorrow, Joe said happily. Joe carefully examined each souvenir on the table, his face glowing with delight. After we both got back on our feet, Joe and his wife moved away for work. Years later, we unexpectedly met in the city and I started helping with a support program for people in need that Joe had started. By then, Joe's wife had passed away, and we began working together as partners in both business and life. I've been leading the organization since Joe retired a few years ago. What began as a small initiative by Joe and his late wife has grown into a large international organization over the past 30 years. Currently, our focus is on helping single moms raise their children. A few years ago, we moved to France to study their advanced support systems. While we become well-known in France, we're still not widely recognized in America. I plan to expand our activities there soon and wanted to spend some time with Tony and his family just as a mother before they found out about my work. In the end, I couldn't get them to understand how I felt. But that's their decision. Even though it was brief, I was happy to spend time together as a family. Now at 70 years old, I believe age is just a number. There's still so much I want and need to accomplish. I straightened my back in my dress and began pondering my upcoming international speech for tomorrow. 